Hi there, I'm Jodie from Blaze Monroe Associates. I am a business coach and I'm here today chatting with Johnny Cole. Would you like to introduce yourself, Johnny? Hi, uh, I'm Johnny Cole. Um, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a comedian, musician, uh, living in the heart of the black country, uh, sitting in my garden, uh, about to be asked some questions. I've got no idea what to expect, but thanks for having me. <laughs> You're more than welcome. So, Johnny, basically, I didn't even know anything about you until last week. When Thanks very much. <laughs> I'm so sorry. We need to work on your marketing. You need a decent business coach or something. I do. I do. <laughs> so I didn't know anything about you, which is crazy, because I've lived in the black, black... Well, I can't even speak. Lived in the black country all of my life. Um, but I wrote an article last week on my own Facebook page about um, things that hold people back in life. And one of the things that I used to think was that I couldn't be a professional speaker because I speak like this, so I've got a black country accent. It's not the strongest of black country accents, I get that, but you can, if I go to meetings across the country, it always gets picked up on. So I wrote a post about that the other day, and then the same day got tagged into a post where one of your songs was on it. Um, and it songs. was... <laughs> songs, with a U. Yeah, definitely, I got you. <laughs> songs. I love it, go on, yeah, sorry. <laughs> so one of your songs was on there, and it was, I found love in the black country. Yeah. So first of all, I was howling, absolutely howling. If anybody hasn't heard this song, you need to go listen to it. <laughs> um, but basically, it was like, obviously, you've got now a, a, an act where you create songs, and they're in the black country accent. So, can you tell me how you got started with that? Um, <coughs> it was really planned. I've, I've been in. I've been looking about with music forever, um, and I was uh, I was getting a bit old for being an angry punk teenager. <laughs> At th you know, when you get to like thirty, <laughs> uh, it's um, and and I woke up one morning and I had a, I had a horrible hangover. And uh, I sat down in the kitchen and it was raining and I looked out of my kitchen and I could see Wensbury, um, which is where I've lived since I was about probably 15 or 16. And, um, and I wrote a song about it and uh, I sang it. I, I mean, my accent changes daily depending on which mates I'm hanging about with or who I'm working with or, or wherever. Yeah. I should be very yum yum. Um, so I switched it up a little bit for the act. So I did this song in this, in this really strong uh, black strong, country accent. Strong with a U. Strong with then. a U. <laughs> yeah, with a U. And, um, and, and I put it, and I sent it to my dad. I sent it to my old man. And, um, and I think he, I, I can't remember. One of us put it on YouTube. It was his suggestion to put it on YouTube. And uh, a couple of days later, a, a pal of mine got in touch. He said, I'm seeing this song everywhere. Like, have you seen this? And it was my song. And it had had a few thousand hits, and I've never had a few thousand hits on anything I'd ever done, ever. <laughs> and, uh, and my old man phoned me up, and he says, son, he says, sir, he says, do you want to do some more of this, uh, this funny stuff? Because no one likes your other stuff, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and he's really brutally honest. <laughs> um, so I did, I wrote another song called um, How Can I Tell Her It's Over When I've Still Got My Xbox at Her House. <laughs> and... Uh, that is such a dilemma. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm and sure it, that has happened. Well, the thing is, all of a sudden, I started making a connection to people with my music. And uh, I've been trying to do that for years, trying to be cool and credible and write stuff that's going to make an impact with, with people. And I just wore that good. <laughs> but uh, I, I landed on this and, uh, and, and, I've start, and I, I, I recognised very early on that there was, a, there was a love for the black country accent and there was a love for this sort of act and there was a love for comedy and laughter. And I thought, I'll have me a bit of this for a bit, especially if I'm getting older and uglier. I might as well chop myself into summer no. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how it started it evolved from there i was playing covers in pubs okay. like a bit of bit of wonder wall and that and and i started slipping these songs in between the covers i was doing oh, okay <laughs> and they were going down better than uh, better than the covers in the end. <laughs> so i started linking them up with a few jokes and um 
That was, okay. that was 10 years ago. <laughs> oh, wow. So it did, yeah. it, all, it all kind of evolved then, just from that one song, and then like you're just giving it a bit of a go. Yeah. And try and error. So in terms of the accent, you said there's like a massive love for the accent. Now, I know for myself, like years ago, I used to always think, oh, God, I sound so sick, I sound stupid. But I know that when I speak anywhere or when I do anything, people always say, oh, I love your accent, I love your accent. And I'm like, I'm like what? <laughs> I think um, <clears throat> it's so un unoffensive when you when you when you when you proper black country and you talk to someone, you don't sound like you're clever enough to rip them off. It's <laughs> it's safe. You know what I mean, yeah. it's safe. It's it's uh, similarly with the uh, the Newcastle accent. It's that friendly. You can't. You don't think this person could ever do you any harm. A lot yeah. of call centres use regional accents. For chasing up money because uh, sorry not for chasing up money for selling things yeah because because the customer doesn't think that they could possibly outthink this them and rip them off so they get yeah. loads of sales because they get their trust whereas if someone's chasing money they go straight for a scouser because they sound quite abrupt yeah. and they don't mess about and they'll t and they'll they'll get the money from from the debt pool so yeah. accents have, have always have been of massive interest to me anyway and look because I say mine changes so much. Yeah. Um, I'm so influenced by, you know, well, I could be watching someone on the telly and I start talking, like, or reading a book, and I start talking in the accent I'm reading in. <laughs> I, I'm reading a bit like it. that. Yeah, I'm a bit like that. I know people have asked me before if I've ever Stephen lived in Stephen Hawking's book is a weird one. Sorry, <laughs> go on. How did that go? Can you do it? No, but I started, I started thinking like it because I was reading it all the time. And, you know, the old style of voice box that he chose to keep, you yeah. know, because he could have had it developed, couldn't he? He could have had any accent body and he could have had any accent he wanted. Yeah. But he chose to stick with, with the original one. Yeah. But yeah, I read his book in his In his, in voice. his voice. Yeah, you do. I think you do do that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's a new act. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, could be. So I had a little bit of a, a stalk um, over the last few days and had a little look on YouTube and I found one of my favourite... Um, parts of one of your sketches was where you talk about the accent and the fact that you use letters rather than words. <laughs> you know which one I'm on about. Yeah, I do, yeah, yeah. Are you okay? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's the telephone call, and it? You can, um, <laughs> you can walk past the bloke on his phone and he'll, uh, and he'll just have a whole conversation in letters. He'll go, oh, hi, why? Hey, oi. Hey. Oh, you are. Oh, okay. And that's it. That's a conversation done from start to finish. I can't wait to send this to captioning. It's going to be hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be like, what on earth? Yeah. Yeah. What? Good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> so one thing you've mentioned is about that your accent changes, like... You know, like you say, like I think sometimes if you're talking to somebody who's really strong, you slip like, oh no, my accent gets stronger when I talk to my mum and dad. And then if I go away to a meeting, it changes again. So how does that, in terms of like the the sort of Johnny Cole like stage character, how, do, how does that work in terms of that? Do you feel like you're like, you're, like all the elements of your personality just intensify for that character? Or is it a completely different person to you? No, I think it's um, a caricature. It's definitely a version of me. It's a very close version of me. But I'd like to think I, I'm, I'm not as quite as ignorant as, and as thick as the, as the stage character. I'd like to think I, I knew a bit more about, about life. But... Um, yeah, but I think the the accent, um, it, it's all about delivery and communication. And most of my audience are very, very black country. So you've yeah. got to be, you know, they'll, they'll sniff you if, if you don't know what you're talking about. You know? <laughs> oh, yeah. um, and they will absolutely call you out on it as well. Yeah, <laughs> and do regularly. <laughs> <laughs> I, bet the, I bet the old dears all love you. I don't know. I've never had any complaints apart from one uh, complaint I had in Aldridge once. Uh, so oh, what was that? Can we know what that is? I, I can't really, I can't remember the gist of it apart from I remember telling her that um, 
it, it, the person who booked me should really match me with the right audience and it's not down to me to, to pick yeah. who I'm in front of and it's not down to her to pick who's been booked for the night so it's really the middleman's fault uh, so she should get in touch with him alternatively she could have written all of the concerns down on a small piece of paper roll it into a tiny tube and pop it in a bum <laughs> I imagine that went down really well. Well, she took the post off. Cool. cool. So, yeah. So, you've not just been um, the Johnny Cole boy from the Black Country forever. So, you have done other stuff. You mentioned your music before. Um, mm. So, where, where have you, where's your music taken you in the past? What other stuff have you been up to? Uh, just, um, I did that classic. Uh, story of a teenager picking up a guitar and getting together with his mates in a, in a in a shed and just making a racket and trying to pull girls and getting up to no good and dreaming that you can take over the world musically and um, I had some great great times with some great people and uh, I, I I wouldn't regret any of that I wasn't ever very successful I toured I did a couple of tours that took me over to the states which was just a great experience. But we yeah. never made any money. We were never going to survive as a as a business. Um, so yeah, that was that was uh, just growing up really. But I learned a lot as far as I'd been in front of some tough crowds, yeah. like from six, 13, 14, 15 years of age, playing in biker pubs and and things like that, where you, you had to as a front man, you, you had to learn to to, to read a crowd and. And how to um, maybe diffuse them sometimes, <laughs> you know what I mean, and, and and sometimes to be funny to keep them on your side. And I think that was a good grounding for me now. Uh, doing what I do now, I think that coming under. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So I can spot that you're wearing a Black Country Radio hoodie there. Yeah, these are so, great. Did we get these for free? You know. <laughs> oh, one. Can I get one of them? We get these for free, and and. Normally, when you get things for free from somewhere you work, they're horrible, aren't they? But these yeah. are really good, really good quality. That does I'm look sure good. I don't take this off. <laughs> I, think I, you should, I think you should send me one of them. <laughs> yeah, I do. Have a look. <laughs> have a look, see have what you've got. Yeah, I <laughs> so, again, I did a bit of stalking, didn't I? And we had a bit of a chat, and I found out that you are the radio host on a breakfast show. So again, so yeah. I sent you a message just thinking you were just some some guy who just does some songs and puts them on YouTube, didn't know anything more about you. And then I find out that actually, you know, you're like this one-man show and you wake the, bre- wake the breakfast up. Wake I the, bre- the breakfast <laughs> up. I wake the breakfast up every morning. <laughs> breakfast, so- come on! <laughs> the time is... <laughs> ah, mate. <laughs> I always, I always knew this was going to happen with you. So yeah, so you waking, you waking the black country up with your breakfast show. So that, yeah. that's got to be some serious amounts of fun and high energy on a morning. Because I can't imagine that you're very <laughs> chilled. <laughs> I, don't, I think every show is different, depending on what I did the night before. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, honestly, I had, um, I got into. I was a guest on um, on Black Country Radio, and uh, I just thought it looked really cool and, and fun. And I just said, just "Can I have a show?" And this was um, about five years ago. So I did some stuff in the afternoons, and it was good fun. But I was spending so much time on it, um, and I wasn't giving it as much as it could have been for what I was doing. I wasn't concentrating on on the show. I was just turning off. Um, and and so I, I knocked it on the head to concentrate on gigging because I had to earn some money and I wasn't earning much doing the radio. And then, um, and then I listened to the breakfast show on Black Country Radio a year ago and I can't remember who it was now, but I remember thinking it was rubbish. <laughs> it was just rubbish. <laughs> so so I found the gaffer and I said, Who, who's this? Who have you got on here? And he was like, look, who am I going to get to come in every morning? And to prove a point, I went, I'll do it. I'll do it. I love it. And then, uh, and then, and then it dawned on me what I just agreed to. But, uh, 
but that was like I said, that was twelve months ago, and um, and it's great. I love it now. I wouldn't change it. We've got some. We've got some listeners that really. They they make my day. They cheer me up. Do you know what I mean? They, they yeah. do more for me than I do for them. I think. Yeah. So, uh, so it's it's good fun. <laughs> cool. I know. Um, I tried to tune in this morning, and I had a meeting first thing. And literally, just as I got on, I ended up with the news. So I was like, "Oh damn!" <laughs> the one day so I waited to like listen to you, and I couldn't even get on on there. So. In terms of the radio, obviously one of the things that radio involves is playing music. So what, what's the fav- your favourite music to be putting on? Well, the great thing about Black Country Radio is because we're quite a small station, we're not really governed by anyone uh, as to what we play. Okay. So, so I, I mean, we've got a head of music and he, he's got a preference to what we play, but I, I don't play that. I play whatever I like. And... Um, and it, and it's brilliant. So we just play what's good. We play we play fifties, sixties, seventies, eighties, nineties, millenniums. We don't play much new stuff because much new stuff's rubbish. Either. <laughs> but but the stuff that comes out is new it's, and it's it good. Is. We'll play it, eh? it. And uh, <laughs> and we play some silly games. We have some phone ins and stuff like that. But but the, with the music, we just play we just play good good music. We don't play a lot of cheese. We don't play a lot of pop. We yeah. play just good music. And don't, yeah, you mentioned the game show because you have a particular game show, haven't you? <laughs> where you've got a bit of a play on words. <laughs> <laughs> you have been stalking me. <laughs> <Very intensely. laughs> yeah. Don't worry, the, restrain, the, the restraining order won't take long to arrange. <laughs> well, um, the, the game uh, is we, we give you we give you three records from across the decades and ask you to put them in order of popularity as per record sales at the time of their release. Okay, right? yeah. That and sounds, the, that and sounds the game, cool. And the game is called Who's Got the Biggest Hits? Who's Got the Biggest Hits? <laughs> <laughs> you, actually, you, actually, you actually have a song that uh, would go quite well with that as well. <laughs> Probably. Yeah, because you sang <laughs> Probably it. Probably got a few. <laughs> when I got I got sent um, a video of you singing to my friend, and, and, and she's 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 quite well known for having the biggest hits. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So yeah. I can't um, remember that. We can't remember. I can't remember. <laughs> can't remember that. <laughs> so. Doesn't sound like something I'd do. It, it doesn't. No, no, I mean, nah. absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> so back, back to the nice stuff. What have you been up to in lockdown? Because I saw, again, I saw something really, really cute and really nice that you've been up to in lockdown. Um, well, the, the radio keeps me busy in the mornings. Um, <clears throat> I've been doing um, dedication songs for people on lockdown. So, People have been getting in touch with me and giving me some dirt on their friends and some or and some embarrassing story, or it might be their birthday or anniversary or something. And I've been writing them a little uh, Johnny Cole song, and um, and so they get, they can send them a video rather than a card. I love that. So, so that's quite cool. And, I'm going to uh, pretend it's that, I'm going to pretend it's my birthday now. I want a song. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to inbox me, but. Um, <laughs> And the other thing we've been doing is doing the, the care homes. We've dropped into a couple of care homes, stood in the garden and belted some oldies at them. <laughs> and, ha- and how has that gone down? I bet that's gone down really yeah, well. Yeah, really good. Yeah, really good. That really was good. that was what I was getting at. I knew, I knew that's it. what you've been doing, yeah, and I thought that was absolutely yeah. lovely. It was just good fun. I just um, It was a beautiful day. and We did VE day as well. But, um, yeah, a couple of days where the sun's been out, we've just dropped on them. And, did it take... Did it take much to arrange to do that, or was it just a case of like just got it sorted? It was really easy, actually. I just well, I had a few reservations, and then somebody warned me off and said, oh, "I wouldn't do that if I were you," and that was <laughs> and that was enough for me to say, "Right, that's See, it. I'm going to do I mean, it. I'm doing it. I think I think yeah. we have a very similar decision making process. So how you how you talked how you talked earlier about the radio <laughs> station where you just was like you wanted to do it, so you just asked for it. That's something I tell people all the time about doing because if people don't know that you want to do something, like 
The only way that they're going to know is if you tell them. You've just got, I think you've got to keep banging doors no matter what industry you're in. You've got to keep banging doors and asking questions because what's the worst that can happen? You know, it, yeah. so it, it might be a ludicrous thing you're asking for, but you, 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 might, you might be just what someone's looking for. Yeah, I get that. I, well, I know when I sent you the message, I was like, this guy's going to think, who on earth is this? Because all the people I've interviewed so far, I already know who they are. So like when I sent you a message, I was like, I don't know. He's going to think, who on earth is this weirdo <laughs> sending me a message asking me to meet him? You've not changed your mind either, have you yet? Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. You're all right. Yeah, I'm all right, bub. Oh, cheers. Cheers, bub. <laughs> so what else can we look forward to seeing from you? Because obviously at the moment you're on lockdown. Um, you're not getting out and about. But what... What about when lockdown's lifted? What are you going to be up to? Well, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that uh, the act will, um, I think everyone's want, going to want to go out a lot once lockdown's lifted. So I think all of us jesters that have been shelved for a short while will be dragged back out and be in need. That's if people can afford to go out. That's if people are going out and socialising. That's the only worry is that because of, you know, there's going to be a lot of people that are just skint and can't go out. Yeah. And um, so it's, it's it's just wait and see time for us. Eh? It's just... Yeah. I think people, I think no matter what, people are going to be out there because everybody's just needs a party, I think. <laughs> Everybody needs to get out. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Other than that, I've, I'm just, uh, while I'm locked down, I'm, I'm doing a new album so I can at least flog something online. Um <laughs> You know, is that is that keep me busy. and that's all in black country so like like the stuff that, that i've been looking that'll be johnny Coles. yeah yeah that'll oh. be the uh, new, new jc stuff cool that's cool so if somebody wants to get in touch with you or they want to see the stuff that you're up to in your work where can they find you well um well you can google me johnny cole it's johnny without a h though so it's um just the j-o-n-n-y c-o-l-e and uh, my facebook page is quite active with, with news and stuff that i'm doing i'm not that good with the social media to be honest with you jokes um there's too much of it and i can't i'm one of those i can't keep on top of a linkedin and a twitter and an instagram and a whatever else so i tend to just stick to facebook and um youtube yeah, the thing is, that's the key. I mean, what I always, when I work with people, the thing I say to them, well, don't, if you can't do them all, pick one to start with and do that really, really well. And consistency yeah. is the key. Like, just keep turning up, just keep turning up consistency rather than try and do five and do five shit, do one mm. and do it well. So, I think as well at the moment on lockdown, uh, it's really important to have a strong online presence with a view to be busy as soon as it lifts because you're going you're gonna to be the one fresh in the mind when when the when the, the cuffs are taken off and people can go out or people can book your business or whatever yeah so uh for me it's just about yes yeah, staying out there staying active and uh, just waiting and seeing like everyone yeah. else i suppose yeah well i'm really excited because obviously one thing that i've spoke to you about um in the background was that i'm running an awards um what is it an award an awards night. A do, um, a bit of a do. A bit a of a bash. do, a bit of a party. Celebrate a all, the, all the good stuff. Um, and because a lot, because obviously the lockdown, it had to be postponed. So obviously when that when that gets to be reset, we're going to look at getting you there, aren't we, for a bit? I'll come and do a bit. It'll be great because you'll make you'll make me sound posh. We'll have a laugh, will we? You'll make me sound posh, mate. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Okay. Can we, we'll, we'll raffle you off it'll be fine <laughs> well thank you so so much for joining me I knew it's it was always going to be like a, a babble of laughs it's, <laughs> so, it's been bags of fun it's been bags of fun thanks for having me don't forget to look for my hoodie I'm not letting you off for that one I'll, I'll order it no. <laughs> it's been lovely to see you and I'll hopefully see you soon thank you bye. very much for the best take bye. care bye